Ah, uh, yes. How do we get a better night's sleep? The sleep doctor is with us, Michael Bruce. And I'm, I'm looking at some of the results here, Kelly, as you are as well. It says 53% of our audience um, have had increased vivid mm -hmm. dreams, which we'll get to in just a second. But Dr. Bruce, look at you there. Your PJs, your, your mug. In is bed. That a, is it a cat yep. or a dog? Absolutely. I got my Kelly and Ryan mug. I like it. And what's it. behind you? He's is that a dog or a cat? This is a dog. sugar bear. It's a dog. Sugar I, my bear. screen is very blurry today. I can't By tell. the way, <laughs> sugar bear is a great name for that dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, all right, let's start. We've a lot to cover here. This is so relatable. Um, first of all, just going back for a second, how essential is sleep to our immune function? So it turns out that sleep is one of the most primary aspects of our immune function um, in very particular ways. Number one is it increases killer T cell production, which is that thing that actually helps kill the virus. So we clearly want increased T cell production. There's also a great study at the University of San Francisco that showed that, in fact, people, if they sleep well before inoculation and then have exposure to the flu, they actually have less of a likelihood of getting the flu. So we think that that could be something that could be very important in these times of COVID. Huh, so interesting. You know, we we, we both took um, the online quiz that you gave us, and we're hoping that our audience does the same thing. A lot of, a lot of them already did. Um, here's what I find fascinating. There, I always seem to fall in between the cracks of different answers. <laughs> Do you find that a lot of people are like neither A nor B? or I'm somewhere in between. How do you get like a good yeah, overall accuracy level? Yeah, you're my problem child when it comes to these types of quizzes for sure. Um, but if you want a grade, I would say that you are probably somewhere around a B, B minus. And Ryan, I think you're kind of a C plus, B minus, depending upon what your answers were. So just so I'm clear, meaning C is not as good as B in this case? I'm going to have to tell you that, yes, your co-host uh, apparently is doing this a little bit better than you. Here's the thing. Here's the, th here's the thing. What can we do right now? I mean, there's a lot on everybody's mind, right? You go to bed, you put your head to your pillow, and that's when things start to spin in my head. So what can we do now to get a better night's sleep and stop the crazy dreaming? Absolutely. So I'm going to talk about dreaming in just a second for sure. So let's talk about what you can do. First of all, give yourself a media diet approximately 90 minutes before bed. You don't need to know how many people have contracted COVID or died in your state having this anxiety provoking information before bed. Give yourself 90 minutes of no media time. Now, if you want to do something relaxing during that time, like meditation, relaxation, one of the things, if you're, if you're going to be in a lit environment, start considering wearing blue light blocking glasses. I know, Kelly, you had mentioned that you're going from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting. These can also help with eye strain. Now, to be fair, yes, I look a little bit like Bono or maybe Elvis Costello, but at the end of the day, these can be incredibly helpful for eye strain as well as blocking that blue light. When we're talking about meditation and relaxation, that's the best thing that you can possibly be doing before bed. And if everybody goes to the, um, to the website for the show, you'll see that we've got a, a link there that you can click on and you get a free downloadable progressive muscle relaxation audio file. And it's perfect because you can just put it onto your phone, you can listen to it before bed and it really helps lower all of that levels of anxiety. Another thing you really need to think about is keep your consistency in your sleep schedule. Wake up at the same time every day. I know that stinks, like you don't wanna wake up at you know, maybe 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, but keeping that consistency is gonna be great for your body and allow your body to be able to react in the way that you want it to. Avoid napping if you possibly can. I know a lot of people are saying, well, I'm in between calls, maybe I'll just take and snooze. That actually lowers your sleep drive and that can be very difficult for you to fall asleep at night. When we're talking about going to bed at night, another thing to think about is a bath, a hot, hot bath about 90 minutes before bed. This increases your core body temperature and then lowers it and that allows for your body to relax. Because remember, we all sleep better in the cool more so than we do in the warm. So keeping it as cool as you possibly can is gonna be important. And then keep your environment really clean. Um, I'm having people wash their sheets about twice a week um, because of course we're bringing in all kinds of bacteria and things like that. 
And if you want a simple thing that will help you fall asleep at night, I've got two really simple natural remedies for you. Um, one is this stuff right here. It's called guava leaf tea. Not guava fruit, or guava juice, but guava leaf tea. I think you can get it on Amazon for like 15 bucks or something. But this actually has a, a research study to show that it helps keep your blood sugar stable throughout the night. And that's one of the reasons that so many people are waking up in the middle of the night. Um, and then the other thing is my recipe for banana tea, which we're gonna have on the website. All you do is take an organic banana, wash it off, cut off the tip and the stem, leave the fruit in it and the peel on it, and boil it for about three minutes in three cups of water. So you're just basically boiling a banana, but it's the water becomes loaded with magnesium. And that's one of the things that can help us fall asleep really easy um, in the early evenings. Is Ryan there... touched on this, doctor, a little bit before we uh, started talking about, you know, all the things we can do um, to, for a better night's sleep. But Ryan started talking about uh, the dreams. People seem to be having very vivid dreams right now. Why is yeah. that? What is causing us? Is it is it the anxiety or... Uh, because I don't typically have nightmares, and I've been having them with a with a, a certain frequency. Yeah. So, so I actually just got the poll data in from our poll. So here's something fascinating, right? So, 53% of our viewers have said that they've had an increase in vivid dreams, and 21% have said um, that they're having nightmares in the past week. So let's let's be very clear about something. This is completely normal behavior. Everybody is experiencing these wild, vivid dreams that we think that there's a couple of reasons. And I, I'm going to actually do, do a little bit more digging. So maybe I'll be able to come back to you guys soon with a whole lot more about dreams and dreaming. But it's our lack of activity during the day. I saw one celebrity tweet. They said, I did 200 steps today and it's noon, right? So that lack of activity during the day is actually affecting the quality of our sleep at night. And this overall level of stress is absolutely having an effect in our dreaming world. All right, we, wow. yes or no, because we've got to run. Do you sleep well? You know what? I do sleep well, but of course, at the end of, the, of this whole situation, I can get affected just as easily as other people, although my dog, Sugar Bear, doesn't seem to be affected at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got uh, these tips and more up at kellyandryan.com. Dr. Bruce, thanks so much. Good to see you. Take care of yourself. Thanks, Dr. Bruce. Absolutely. Great to see you guys, too. Everybody, sweet dreams.